Hi, I'm David Bram. I'm here at the Autosport Show International in Birmingham. Welcome to Around the Bend. Hello and welcome to Around the Bend, the Donington Preview with me, Sean, but there is no Bart, he's not here because of work commitments, so unfortunately you're going to have to put up with me for the next 20 minutes. We're just going to be talking about Donington Park uh, and other stuff that has happened before the meeting, uh, which has only just been one main topic, which we will talk uh, later on in the uh, broadcast. So, Donington Park, 10 towns, it's the national circuit, just under two miles, a great circuit for everyone. Uh, it's a, it's a partic particularly uh, good favourite track of mine, as it has had some some of the most historic races in British touring car history. You think, you think back to last year, the final race, with um, Josh Cook and Aaron Smith nearly having a massive crash at the Crane of Curves and taking uh, several cars with them couple of lead changes and all that as, as well, so just a fantastic race. You think back to 1998 when Donington, um, the feature race with Nigel Mansell, that one and a half laps where he was battling with Ivan Muller, John Cleland and the two Nissans of David Leslie, rest in peace, and Anthony Reid. And, you know, that one and a half laps just showed what British touring cars is all about. You go back to 1994 when he raced on the full uh, Donington Circuit. If you may remember back to Gabrielli Tarquini uh, when he was racing in an Alfa Romeo, he already clinched the championship there, so uh, there was some technical infringement on the car, and he had to start at the back of the field, and he worked his way up to about fourth or fifth, and then got into the, the S's, the S's, the chicane bit, and nearly went over, you know, a, a very massive historic moment uh, that was, and also it couldn't have been as more uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm, I'm trying to think. Heroic. As Matt Neal's win back in 1999 when he became the first independent uh, team to win a British touring car race and picked up a cool quarter of a million pounds. There's also been some mad, bad crashes before in the past. If you think back to Keith O'Dor in 1992 when they did the old Toka shootout where the car flipped over past the crater clouds and went over the catch fence, nearly hit some of the marshals there. Nigel Mansell's big crash in 93 at Starkey's Bridge. Jason Plato tumbling in 2011. The massive wreck at the uh, Essence Chicane in 2010 involving the two biggest rivals, Plato and Neil, along with Andy Jordan and Rob Collard, and, and many, many more. It's just a, a, a favourite circuit for, for a lot of the drivers and a lot of the fans and all. The only thing it is missing back, and we did talk, we talk about that in the last preview, was the Dunlop Bridge needs to be back where the Dunlop Street is. Uh, as Bart says, Chris Evans has got it, so it would be great if Chris could bring it back. I think we should actually trend it. Hashtag bring our bridge back, or hashtag Bob, B-O-B-B. -B -B. That would be fantastic. Right, so the first topic we want to talk to you about is Media Day. Now, Bart went to Media Day, got a couple of pictures and that for, for me. That was, was awesome to see. Also, uh, on Media Day, the Laser Tools Racing, uh, they had a bit of a promo. And Bart was actually in it. And he also plugged our podcast. So, get in there, Bart. Well done, my son. Well, I wouldn't say son. He's more of a, a dad. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he gave a little cheeky plug to our podcast, so I, I should probably put a link into the uh, description, I should like, to see it, and then you'll see Bart in the flesh and standing next to a nice jeep or whatever, I can't mind what it was. So yeah, we'll talk about Media Day, uh, this, was, this was the day when all the touring car drivers showed the car off in the public to the fans' perspective, to the paparazzi, and also did a official photograph of the drivers that will compete in this year's Touring Car Championship. Matt Neal ended up being the fastest of the lot, with a time of 1 minute 10.140, and he only did that 
on the last lap of his fly, well, the last flying lap of his uh, amount of laps. Ash Sutton, that was very impressive, the rookie finished in second place, just less than a tenth than Matt Neal's time. Rob Austin in the improved Toyota Avensis was third quickest, just one and a half tenth off Matt Neal. And Tom Ingram, who actually did the least amount of laps on Media Day, he only done 11 laps, and he ended up being fourth fastest, which, you know, you could say is pretty impressive. The guy that had the next least amount of laps was Dan Welsh all the way down in 22nd place. He was 2.2 off Matt Neal's time, but he only did 20 laps. And just consider, you know, Tom did 11 laps and ended up being fourth quickest. I'll give you a rundown of the top 10. Josh Cook, the second of the MG team uh, drivers, was fifth fastest. Then you got the two Eurotech teammates of Martin Depper and Jeff Smith. Only one thousandth of a second separated them two. Adam Morgan, eighth. Matt Jackson, ninth. And Sam Tordoff being four tenths off Matt Neal's fast time. He was the tenth fastest and he was the first of the BMW drivers. Most notable inventions, Rob Collard was 12th quickest. The champion, Gordon Shedden, was 16th quickest, the full eight tenths of Matt Neal. Andy Jordan, 17th. Jack Goff was 18th. And, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it, really. Some drivers that didn't do uh, testing on Media Day, uh, the Maximum Motorsports driver, Stuart Lyons, he was there, but he didn't test his forward focus. Um, who else? Michael Epps, he did not test his car. I think that was because it was on Monday he was announced he was going to be the third driver, so it was pretty late for him to be named as a third driver for, for Team Haas, so he didn't test at all. Uh, Emmerdale actor Kelvin Fletcher for Power Max, the Chevrolet Cruze, he didn't test his car because uh, I think he was uh, important doing some acting. And most notably, the four BMR Subarus, they didn't test their car. They were more interested in showing the car off to the public, to the fans, instead of testing the car to see how it is. To me, my perspective was that is and, and again, I said this in the previous uh, podcast with, with Bart. They may have missed a the trick there. They, would, they could have got some important data for them to get themselves ready and get them prepared for Brands Hatch. Which I will interrupt myself by saying this. Bart made a mistake in what he said. He, if, he said in the, in the previous podcast that the uh, BMR team tested the car a day after Media Day. They didn't. They actually tested the very first test that they did with the new Subaru. They tested it out at Brands Hatch on race weekend. That was the first time. So they had three times to practice, you know, to, to learn to learn with the car. They did it in FP1 and FP2, and then they did it in qualifying to learn the car. It would have been important for them to get some data in the car, get some mileage in the car behind it, and what have you. Um, yeah. Uh, to me, I feel like BMR have missed a trick. However, they're going to be starting at Donington on the back foot yet again, like they did at Brands Hatch. But it's going to be interesting to see how they will perform come the three races and in qualifying as well. You could also say the, f uh, the, the, the two practice sessions as well. I've just noticed here that Ollie Jackson for AMD Tuning, the Audi team, uh, did the most amount of laps. He did 71 laps and it was only good enough for 15th place. So yeah, that's basically media day. Uh, it's a, it, you know, it's a, it's a special day. I think this is when all the fans just come out of hibernation like I do and uh, just be so happy just to see the cars out on track and then that's when you know that BTCC is coming back and then, you know, we all get shivers, we all get excited because you know, British Touring Cars is the best series in Europe, if not the world. <laughs> yeah, I've said it, I've said it. That's Bart saying, by the way. Right, so enough about Media Day. I want to talk about one of the main things that's been going on uh, after the Brands Hatch meeting, and that is Andy Neat, the Halford Juasa racing driver, has had his contract terminated at the team. Uh, I think it's probably for the best that we shouldn't say why he was, uh, that he was, I don't want to say sacked, but I think that's too much of a harsh word until his contract got terminated. 
I think that's a pretty decent couple of words to say. <laughs> yeah, how his contract got terminated. I think they should keep it behind closed doors. If there's something happened in the team, they should keep it to themselves. Don't let it out to the public. I would understand that from our point of view. But, however, and this could be up for a debate, that means there is a TBL license which is up for grabs, which is now in the hands of the British Touring Car Organisers. And they are going to pick a team in which they're worthy of that TBL license and give it to them for Thruxton the next round of the championship, which will be in the 7th and 8th of May, so about, about three weeks away. I mean, there's, there's there's a few teams that could be worthy of getting uh, another CBL license in their team. You think back to what uh, some teams that were scheduled to run more cars, but ended up didn't. Like, say, for example, the Handy Motorsports team of Rob Austin. That, that uh, Sam Belcher was talking about having a two-car team, but then it went to a one-car team because Belcher was taking a sabbatical. Would it benefit them by having a second car out for Frankston? Maybe. What about the Eurotech team? They were scheduled to have three cars out for this year's cha championship, but only had to settle for the two cars. Will that also benefit them? What about the teams that are at the back end of the field, like Dexter Racing with Alex Martin? Could he be financially stable enough to have another car in that team? What about Stuart Lines? What about, what about the new team, BKR? After what happened with Aaron Smith at, Bre at Brands Hatch, do you think they should bring out a third Volkswagen CC? And if if that's the case, who will be the driver? It's all up for debate. And yeah, I've, I'm you know I'm I'm kind of looking forward to see who will get that license come at Froxton. What a way though, if you want to make your if it's going to be a debut driver or a returning driver to go at Froxton, one of the most daring circuits in the UK. It's the fastest circuit as well in the UK. So. You know, good luck with that. Right, so that's pretty much it about with Andy Neat. And now we're getting on to the main bit. I will now get my balls out. The ping pong balls. What this is, is it's some sort of driver shooter. I decided to do this over thinking about it after January because I did have a big nap. Uh, when uh, the final race of the British Touring Car Championship from last year was, and then I had a massive about three months nap. And then I came up with this idea. I actually managed to buy ping pong balls from a website for about seven quid. And then I was looking for some more ping pong balls at another shop that's close to me, and it was selling 48 ping pong balls for 30 odd quid, whereas I got 150 for seven quid on this website. So you know where to go. And I have here is all these ping pong balls, and it's got 32 drivers of this year's British. Two I should say 31 drivers. I need to find, I need to find Andy Neat's ping pong ball. I need to find it. And then let me give you. Here it is. I've got it. Look, that's a ping pong ball, and that's got Andy Neat's name on it. So unfortunately, he's out of the championship. So. Away you go, Andy. So now, we've only got 31. I know it's not a lot, but, you know. <laughs> 31 balls in here, and each ball has a touring car driver's name. I'm going to pick my hand in, not looking like what Rob Austin did last year when he put his car on the pole position for Brands Hatch, and then made a massive apology and all that. I am going to be looking at one of the pictures up on the roof, and I will pick out a driver and versus another one. So say, for example... If I pick out, um, if I pick out, say, Gordon Shedden versus Matt Neal, which of these two drivers are going to finish ahead of one, of one another? So it's either going to be a 2-1 win or a 3-0 win for someone. Do you know what I mean? Because it's three races. Right, so here we go. I will dip my hand in. You have to trust me on this one because I hope you do trust me because I am picking these balls out very fairly. Right, the first driver out is Adam Morgan, the Mercedes driver. Adam Morgan versus this one. This is an interesting one. Jack Goff for BMW. That's an interesting one. Adam Morgan versus Jack Goff. 
Right. Uh, I think it's going to be a 2-1 win, definitely. Who to, I don't know. I think if you go for more consistency, I would go for Adam Morgan over Jack Goff. Um, although, to be fair, both of them did have a pretty impressive start to the championship. With Adam Morgan actually getting a win and uh, Jack Goff getting 10th, 7th and 3rd in his opening three rounds of the championship. Uh, it's going to be very close, but I think I'm going to go for a Morgan 2-1 win. That's what I'm going to go for. You can also have, we could do like a friendly league and all that if anyone else is interested in doing it. Be sure to go ahead. I will put the, uh, the driver shootouts in the description below. So, yeah, the first one, Adam Morgan versus Jack Goff. I think it's going to be a 2-1 win for Adam Morgan. I might be wrong. It could be a 3-0 win for Jack Goff. It could be a 3-0 win for Adam Morgan. It could be a 2-1 win for Jack Goff, you know? So, interesting. All right, then. We'll have another... We'll have, pick another two more ones. Alex Martin, because we, we were talking about him not too long ago. Alex Martin versus... Sam Tordoff. I think, you know, no disrespect to Alex, I think that's pretty much a walkover for Sam Tordoff. I think that's a 3 0 win right there for, for Sam Tordoff. And the last one. Here we go. Jason Plato. Jason Plato in the Subaru. Versus. Jeff Smith. Right. Jeff Smith. Okay. This is interesting. Um, I think it's safe to say Jason Plato's not in the hunt to win the championship for this year. Uh, I, some of the fans didn't expect the, the Subaru to be not as competitive as the Hondas, the Toyotas, the, the BMWs, the MGs. Uh, Jeff Smith you know, he's had a year racing in that car. I'm going to go... I'm going to go for a 2-1 win for Jeff Smith. I've said it again. 2-1 win for Jeff Smith. Might be a bit controversial because, you know, it's Jason Plato, but that's what I think. I'm going for a 2-1 win for Jeff Smith. And that is the end of the driver predictions. So then... Getting back to Donington, going to be interesting to see if any other drivers will continue their good form going into Donington, some drivers in particular, and one driver I want to talk about is Dan Welch. Uh, to be fair, the last couple of years has been a bit of a nightmare for, for Dan Welch, that was when he was in, well he's still in the Proton now, but when he was in the Proton with an actual Proton engine. Now, it's a Swindon-based engine, and he's already scored points in two of the opening three races of the season. Hopefully, he can continue that form. Even though it's not high up, it, he still managed to get points. He got 12th and 15th. Uh, the third race, he got 20th. But it's still, he scored more points than his, two, his previous two seasons. He, he only got one point last year, and I think the year before that, he ended up with minus four. 40, I think it was. That was because of numerous, numerous engine changes. Numerous of them. Um, who else that was surprisingly did well? I, I would like to see Matt Simpson. Matt Simpson's been, you know, around out in the mid-table, but he's also beaten some of the main teams, like the BMR Subarus. Um, so, watch out for him, because he might probably do okay there. Um... The MG drivers, I think, look out for them, considering how well they raced, uh, they performed on media day with Ash Sutton second fastest and Josh Cook fifth fastest. Expect them to be up at the front. Maybe one of them, one of them two drivers could end up being on the podium, if not both of them. Look out for them. And I cannot wait until the next rounds, the next three rounds of the championship as well. And also expect to see some great racing in the Clios. I don't think the Porsches are going to be racing there. I think they are in the FIA Endurance Championship series because they're racing at Snetterton tomorrow. They're not racing at Donington. So I think that championship has gone over to Silverstone. Uh, it was supposed to be racing at Spa, but there was a massive crash in the second race at Spa last year. So I think that's why they decided to not go to Spa 
for this year. So no posh could have a cups there. They will, but you'll see the others. You'll see the Genetta Juniors, the Genetta GT4 Super Cup, the MSC Formula Series, the Renault Clio Cup. Uh, have I missed anything out? I don't think so. No, I think that's pretty much it. So thanks then to uh, hearing the preview show. I am looking forward to Donington, and I'm hoping that you are as well. And I think we'll be doing another show talking about what happened in the races. Uh, with Bart, hopefully he's got some time on his hands so we can do it together. But it's been Sean from Around the Bend, and we will see you around the bend. See ya!